has been shining for several billion years and will shine for several more. It provides Earth with solar power and makes life possible. In the upcoming decades, scientists are hoping to copy the energy source of the sun here on Earth in so-called fusion reactors. Cadarache in southeastern France, not far from Aix-en-Provence, sits here in the hills north of Marseille where ITER is going to be built by the European Union and six partner countries after years of political and environmental controversy. That whole process is taking about 10 years uh, from now. Uh, in about 10 years' time, we hope to have our first experiments on the machine. From 2009 onward, the huge reactor hall will be erected here, with 17 buildings around it. Inside the circular reactor chamber, a so-called tokamak will be assembled from oval elements surrounded by superconducting magnets. It's in this tire-like tube that a super-hot plasma of hydrogen particles is intended to be created for fusion at temperatures 10 times hotter than the sun. Next to the ITER site is the French nuclear test facility of Cadarache. Here for decades, French scientists pursued the fission or division of heavy atoms. But in fusion, light hydrogen atoms have to be merged together. In the so-called Tor Supra Plasma experiment at Cadarache, the problems of dealing with fusion have also been studied to lay the groundwork for ITER. Today we are ready to construct ITER. That means that the technologies for it have been developed by Tor Supra in order to create this prototype. From fusion test sites all over the world, research results are now being brought together to build ITER. In the research center in Garching, next to Munich in Germany, Italian physicist Gianfranco Federici is working with fusion experts like Vladimir Barabash from Russia and Kimihiro Ioki from Japan towards building ITER. In the autumn, they move to Karadash like hundreds of other scientists and engineers from all over the world. At the Institute of Plasma Physics, Gianfranco Federici has spent years experimenting with different designs and materials for ITER. At the moment, he's testing combinations of beryllium, carbon or tungsten for their later use in the wall of the fusion chamber. Tungsten is a material which is very heavy in comparison with beryllium or graphite, but it has an advantage that there's a high melting point, so it can hold a lot of power deposited onto it, plus it's not eroded as easily as other material. So it's a very promising material from the point of view of reactor development, the problem with tungsten is just a tiny bit of tungsten might pollute the plasma and may degrade the performance of plasma. Gianfranco Federici has been facing such problems for years. The construction of a safe and reliable reactor is not only a matter of physics, but a huge challenge for clever engineers and designers as well. Together with German physicist Joachim Rott, he's trying to find the right combination of materials and design. The wall not only has to resist the extreme heat in the plasma chamber, but also must not absorb the heavy hydrogen, deuterium and tritium used as fuel for the fusion. This is a typical tile from a fusion experiment. We're researching basically how much deuterium has condensed here in the experiment. This is very important in order to know how much of the radioactive tritium is being withheld in ITER. In such plasma experiments, scientists try to find out which materials and designs help to reduce these problems. Also, new ways to sufficiently heat up the hydrogen fuel still need to be developed for the fusion process to start. So far, for example, heating methods like those used in the European fusion test site JET in Cullum in Britain are still not enough to create a fusion process for longer than a few seconds. Physicist Ursel Fans and her team are searching for ways to heat the plasma with high-speed neutral hydrogen particles. We've reached the physical levels for this process, so we're confident that it works. But of course, we've still not yet reached the dimension that's necessary for ITER. At the moment, we can heat the plasma only for a few minutes, but at least one hour will be necessary. In the sun, huge gravitational forces make fusion possible at temperatures of more than 12 million degrees, releasing enormous amounts of energy into space. It's the same process that scientists on Earth want to use as an almost inexhaustible source of energy for mankind, in addition to sustainable ones.
The fusion reactions working with deuterium and tritium atomic cores that merge together and thereby release energy in the form of high-speed neutrons. On Earth, the energy of these neutrons needs to be caught in the walls of the reactor in order to heat a traditional steam cycle for the production of electricity. Fusion works. The proof is there, okay? There is nobody that can argue. Fusion works on the sun. The reason why it works on the sun is that because gravitation, which is huge on the sun, and likely is not big on Earth, otherwise we won't be here talking about it, keeps this nuclei together, give them enough time and energy to react together so the reaction can self-sustain. Unlike existing nuclear power plants based on the fission of highly radioactive uranium, the fusion reaction does not create highly hazardous nuclear waste materials. But the fast neutrons that are created in the fusion process could create radioactive isotopes of material in the reactor walls of ITER if they're not constructed properly. ITER is therefore only going to be an experimental reactor, working at 20 times higher energy levels than in existing plasma experiments. At a cost of 10 billion euros, ITER will never create commercially usable electricity, but it will be the last step before reaching the goal of creating power plants with fusion for all of mankind, hopes Russian scientist Vladimir Barabash. ITER is, uh, uh, will be built by seven parties. And uh, parties are responsible for some components for, uh, of ITER. But these components must be put together. It means that in ITER we uh, now developing a lot of things related to accuracy, as example, for tolerances, for coding standards, for acceptance of different components made in different countries. After having spent several years in Munich, Barabash and his colleagues from Gatsching will move to Kadarash in a few months. So will other scientists from all over the world with their families. In the upcoming years, they'll not only be challenged by the construction of ITER, they'll also have to cooperate in an international team in an almost unprecedented scientific endeavor. You could imagine that uh, 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 with participation of such many, many countries and also the way we organize uh, the, the collaboration is quite unique. And also this type uh, form of collaboration could be a good precedent for other, uh, any kind of uh, international collaboration. In 2016, ITER partners and politicians hope to begin with fusion tests here on the hills of Kadarash, but it's probably not until 2035 that a functioning fusion reactor will produce the energy of the sun for future generations on Earth. <laughs>